morning, folks. Good morning. It is September. Can you believe it? Yes. It's here. August felt like a long month for some reason. Ah. Uh, I want to welcome everybody on Zoom this morning. Thank you for being with us and those here today. I think we've got some people here I have not seen before, and I'd like to ask if they would introduce themselves to us. Sorry, we'll be here, sir. You've seen me before. Have I? I'm, I'm Daniel. Oh, I didn't recognize you with your hat on. <laughs> good morning, Daniel. Hi. It's good to see you again. And how about the people next to you? I am Letty. Friend. Friend. Friend Daniels and then friend Cheyenne. Ah, well. Oh, okay, great. So he brought you, he invited you to come and, and uh, enjoy Cheyenne today? Yes. yes. Wonderful. You have your own fan base, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Woo! I don't have a fan base. That's great. I like that. <laughs> Anybody else here for the first time? I'm Andy. Hi, Andy. And who else? Yeah. Oh, Kathy. Larry. Larry, friends with Caroline. Oh, nice. It's her artist group. Great. <laughs> Great. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's good to see you all. Good morning, Patty. Good morning. I saw you sneak in. I sneak in, Oh, gosh. Well, this year of 2023 is the year of living from one's core values. And our themes for September are humor honesty and hopefulness. I'm looking forward to having our speakers talk to us about that this, this month. Look forward to what they have to say. Ah, and I think we should ask Cheyenne to come up and play a little background music for us. Is this for the meditation? For the meditation. It's time to get settled in and just take a few minutes to just be, just be one spirit. I'd like to be at peace and free where all I feel is surrender. My breath oozes. Thank you. 
Please guide my life that I will cry with joy and kindness and beauty to serve and be the best I can expressing love is my duty please guide my In these past few moments, I was thinking about resting in God. I hadn't thought about those terms before, in resting in God. It feels so, so pleasant. Let us be honest with ourselves and others. We do always have hopefulness for each day being a great experience. Let our humor guide us and help us, lift us and others daily as we rest in God. And so it is. Ooh, thank you, Cheyenne, that was beautiful. That was really, really restful. It's time for our spiritual thought, and I want to bring up our practitioner, Patty Hummel, for that. Patty, good morning. Good morning. Tall person. <laughs> Those tall people, I tell you. I have to be humorous about it. Um, as um, Joe mentioned, our topics this month are humor, honesty, and hopefulness. And uh, if I can get this good, I've got my funky cheater glasses on. I just had cataract surgery, and it went really well. Uh, but I don't have my my contact lenses yet, so uh, so I'll be squinting a little bit. So, have you heard the one? about the Zen monk that went into a pizza parlor. So the Zen monk goes into the pizza parlor and he says, make me one with everything. 
Oh, yeah, I have heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> so guy goes in the back and he, he makes an everything pizza and he brings it out and he's like, here you go. And, and the monk pulls out a 50 and hands it to him and waits for his change. And the guy just kind of puts it in the cash register and doesn't do anything. And the monk says, well, don't I get any change? And the guy says, Change comes from within. <laughs> Didn't that feel good? Doesn't it feel good to laugh? Um, in researching and uh, you know for this talk and the writings I do and I focus, um, I read that Mahatma Gandhi once said, "If I had no sense of humor." I would long ago have committed suicide. And I was like, well, that doesn't sound very Gandhi-like. Um, but, you know, it, he lived in serious times, and we live in serious times, and we take them so seriously. But sometimes we forget to breathe. Laughter and humor, it brings air. It brings air into our lives, it's healing, it's unifying, and it's, it's what we need on our spiritual path. <coughs> Walking a spiritual path isn't really easy. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali say, Vitarka, Badami, Prati, Paksha, Bhavadam. <coughs> when disturbed by disturbing thoughts, think of the opposite. A sense of humor is a gateway to lightness and joy. And we need more of that in our life. There's no escaping the fact that, you know, laughter feels good. We like comedy because it makes us feel buoyant and uplifted and joyous. And we laugh our butts off. It's fun. It may have started out as a coping mechanism. You know, because life isn't easy, but it, it stimulates your organs, it, you know, it gets those juices flowing. It, uh, according to doctors, it releases endorphins. That's always a good thing. So it, the opposite of humor is seriousness. Seriousness is, is rigid, it's cynical. Both of them are concepts of maturity and adulthood filtered through ego. You know, I'm so serious. I think true maturity acknowledges what exists and then laughs at it. In the Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz highlights how ludicrous seriousness is. Um, let me read this for you. It says, if you watch children when they are playing adults, you will see their little faces change. Let's pretend I'm a lawyer. And right away, their faces change. The adult face takes over. We go to court and that's the face we see. And that's what we are. We are still children, but we have lost our freedom. We can see life for what it is, but you know, we, we don't wanna be inappropriate. I mean, the, the cosmos is not serious. Nature is not serious. It's playful. Trees aren't serious. Clouds don't crave drama like a lot of people I know. But clouds can be very dramatic. Stars don't judge. Nature is lighthearted. Problems feel serious. Seriousness prevents us from inviting the joy and magic that should be in our lives. Humor is a tool. It's a tool on our spiritual path. It, you know, it's just, just like meditation or journaling or, you know, well, whatever is your thing to do on the spiritual path. There are times to use it and there are times not to use it. But start with yourself. Look at all the things you worry about and try laughing at them. And then laugh some more. And keep laughing until you can see them again from a different angle. 
you might be surprised at what they look like when you no longer take them quite so seriously. So I'm going to close with um, a quote from the infamous Mr. Wavy Gravy, one of the merry pranksters. And he said, keep your sense of humor, my friend. If you don't have a sense of humor, it just isn't funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes, humor. Ah, I use it daily, especially if I'm working on a project that's not going so well. I'll actually stop and laugh at myself. Years ago, I would throw something or just have a tantrum or something, but now I just laugh at it. You know, okay, I'm going to back away and start again, and it just gets easier because uh, life is getting way too short to be too serious, at least for me anyway. That was wonderful, Patty. Thank you. Cheyenne, you have a, you have a song for us? Yeah, sure. See, I was spending a lot of time talking so you could get up here and be ready. But... Oh, uh, next time. Yeah, next time. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Snotton Power song called Echo Dark.
Beautiful. Well, it's time for our main speaker. And today we're bringing you up here, our very own Reverend Sandy Wetz. Come on up, Sandy. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. LJ saw a couple deer this morning across mm -hmm. the back, and it's just a lovely time of year, a beautiful day out. Yes. We get so used to thinking of beauty with the sun, we forget that all the other seasons are gorgeous too. Yes. I was thinking about the topics I'm driving on the way in this morning, and the one that really jumped out at me was hopefulness. And I was musing over it, thinking of all the things that hopeful is. You get up in the morning, you anticipate a gorgeous day, you want things to go well, you think about your life, you're blessing the day, all those wonderful things. And then my thoughts drifted to what is life when there is no hope? And I got a picture of the living dead. If there's no hope, why would you want to get up? Why would you want to do anything? Try to imagine if I had no hope, I would probably be sitting staring at the wall. Without hope, how could I enjoy the beautiful flowers? How could I enjoy the beauty that was there today? Enjoy the deer that LJ saw, all of those things. And it made me realize that it is important that we cultivate hopefulness in our lives, that we think about it, that we work at seeing the beauty, that we look around and talk to ourselves maybe. Okay, we're driving today, what do we see that's good? What do we see that's pretty? What do we see that inspires me? Maybe it's the clouds. Maybe it's a beautiful tree. Maybe it's the sound of the rain on the roof. But to find something to hold on to, to really work at it, because we desperately need it. We need to be able to look forward to tomorrow, to look forward to living this life. We've got a lot of years left. Can you imagine going through all that time with no hope? No sense of the beauty and the possibilities, the looking forward. I love having grandchildren, my great grandchildren, because I see it in them. I see their excitement. I see that they're wanting to do things and to go. And no matter how difficult it is, my uh, youngest granddaughter started school and the first two days she cried. It was so hard for her to be away from her mom. She was used to being with her mom, you know, 24 seven. But then it got better and she got excited about going to school. She had something to look forward to, to go. She had friends there, things to do, things to stimulate her mind. And she loves it now. And it showed me how important it is that we almost force ourselves to get out and to do, that we spend time looking at things, that we touch the trees, that we take a moment when you go out, you get out of your car before you go in the house, take a moment and look around. See the beauty, see the glorious things that there are to see. We live in a beautiful place here in the mountains. There's lots of beauty to see to enjoy the silence, to really allow the silence to speak to you, to be part of you, to enhance your life. We have so much up here, so much, if we will allow ourselves to enjoy it, to immerse ourselves in it, to be a part of it. And it really goes along with humor. We have to laugh at everything. We have to laugh at ourselves because we are humorous. Have you ever thought about just stepping back and watching yourself? Yeah, we're funny people. <laughs> we do silly things, we 
you know, how many times have you walked in and forgot why you walked in? Now that's laughable, laugh at it. You know, all these kind of things, we gotta laugh at ourselves and see that life is really enjoyable. It's worth living. We are worth knowing because we're happy. We have so much to share. We have hearts. We have givingness. We have what the world needs. And it really is important that we have all that. And with it, to be honest, honest about what's going on with us. We can't lie to ourselves anymore. We're too old for that. You know, it's, it's, it's a done deal. It was so easy to lie before. Everything's okay even when it wasn't. You know, it was okay for me to drink even when it wasn't. It was okay for me to be angry even when it wasn't. It was okay to say those ugly things even when it wasn't. I had to quit lying to myself to have a life that was worth living. I had to be honest with me more than with anyone else. For I was more honest with others than I was with myself. Others could see what I was. I couldn't see what I was. And I had to work on that. I had to look at myself in the mirror and talk to myself. I did this. I looked at myself and told myself all the ugly things I was doing, all the things I needed to change. And boy, that was hard to do, to look at me in the eye. But I did it. And once I did that, I was able to start changing. I was able to start doing things differently. I was able to start figuring out what the Sandy I wanted to be was. And I hadn't known that before. I'd only known what I didn't want to be, but I hid that for myself, what I didn't want to be. <clears throat> it is so glorious now to get up, like coming to church today. It was beautiful on the ride in. All kinds of trees and the lake was gorgeous. Everything was beautiful. People were nice on the road. You know, nobody was trying to run me over. It was glorious. No horns honking. All the good things. And to get here, and beautiful Cheyenne was there with her smile. Oh, and then with her music. Life is good. We have a good life. But it's important that we use these attributes that we're talking about this year and we talked about last year. Because they all make us who we are and what we're becoming. And in this now moment, I want to be the best me I can be, the most loving me I can be, the most caring me I can be. Whatever that is, however that looks, I want to be that. I don't want to ever step back into what I was. And when I look on it now, it's like it was a different lifetime, a world far away. It's really hard to connect with how I want to say how ugly I was, for I was ugly inside, and that was very, very ugly. And I don't want to ever connect with that again. That's not where I want to go or what I want to be. I want to be in this now moment, here. In this moment, I'm with my family. We're enjoying each other. We're enjoying the music, the talks, being with the people. It's a lovely moment. And my life is going to be a connection of these moments, as I hope it will be for all of you, to be able to have the smiles and the caring, the hugs, the sharing. It's so exciting when I open the door on Sunday and people smile. It's a good thing. And it just makes my heart open and expand more because it's what matters. And I found over the years that figuring out what matters was one of the most important chores I had to do. It was something that was imperative to figure out what it was. And I have, looking at the smallest flower on the ground, you know, the little tiny ones that are like a size of a quarter or smaller, that matters. All of it matters. And I hope 
and encourage you as you go forth that you take all of that with you, that you take your humor with you and you use it. You hold doors open for people and you smile. You pick up something that someone's dropped and you smile. You look people in the eyes and you smile because that's how we all connect. That's what we need on this world. We don't need the discord that's going on. What are termed wars that are going on? We need what we have here in this moment and to share it and to role model it so that the world knows there's something else, something beautiful, something to fight for. And they are realizing that, but they have to get past the fighting for it to get past to being in the lovingness of it. And that will come, for we all go through stages. As we look around the world, you can see the stages that the United States went through as we became a democracy and then we evolved. And you can see the things that we still have to work on. We're not perfect. We have a lot to work on in our country too. But it begins with us individually in our hearts how we are. The world is a better place because we're in it, in the mindset that we're in, doing what we're doing and being what we're being. We make the world a better place when we get up every morning, when we smile, when we share, when we go out. It's important, more important than anyone knows. I want to be able, when I leave this world, to be able to go wherever it is that we go and be able to see these big archives that are somewhere and be able to see that I did good things, that I learned to love, that I had a sharing heart. I want to be able to see that my being here mattered. I want to be able to know that and to be good with it. I remember reading this short story where these people had been on Earth at one time and now they were on another planet and they were getting into a spaceship and they were going to go out and watch as the Earth blew up, which it will someday. But what we are and our souls do not blow up. We live eternally, always, always here always, always somewhere, for we are within God, and God is everything and everywhere. So we are always a part of us everywhere, at all times, and it's important that we know that, that we allow it to be, that we expand into it, that we become it. Life is very, very good. So go forth this week and share your smiles, share your heart, Help make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Sandy. You're talking about being a little kid and not wanting to go to someplace without your mom or family. And I was five years old and living in Culver City, Los Angeles, and my mom dropped me off for my first day of kindergarten. I didn't know what kindergarten meant, but it meant that I had going to be someplace without my mom. And I loved my mom. I didn't ever want to leave her side. So she dropped me off in front of the school and told me to go through this gate and right through this door and you'll have someone meet you there and you'll be playing with other children. Okay, so I got out of the car and she drove off and I said, I don't think so. So I turned to the right and I just started walking down the sidewalk. And I was just having a great time just walking down this residence and this LAPD officer pulled up and says, uh, where are you going? I said, I'm just going for a walk. He says, okay. He says, what's your name? I gave him my name. He says, you want to ride in a patrol car with me? I said, yeah, sure, that's, that's cool. No wonder I became a cop. I started learning about it as a young, as a young guy. So I thought, I like this. I didn't like where he took me back to the school. <laughs> but yeah, I got there. My mom was there, and this teacher was there, and yeah, so that was, <laughs> that was my first day experience at school. So, hey, I didn't want to be there. 
You can only go uphill from there. Yeah. I don't want to be here. I'm gone. Yeah. I, I had three or four outings with peace officers when I was a young boy. I'm not sure why, but I, I did. So I'm glad my mother isn't around to tell you those stories. That's, geez. It's time for our offertory. Could I get a couple of people to help me with offertory this morning? Okay. And let's do our offertory statement. Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you, ushers. And those with you on Zoom with us this morning, you may tithe by going into iFocus if you like. Uh, there's an email that, that you receive that says, shows you how to push the green button. It has easy instructions on how you can give funds to BLC. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. Thank you. Go. Any announcements this morning? Okay, good. Oh, John's got one. John does? John does. Okay, John, you have an announcement for us? I do. I just want to announce that next Saturday, September 9, 9, 9 at 2 o'clock to 3.30, we will have a flute circle, and hoping anyone interested uh, will come. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. I know uh, most all of you have heard him play this flute at, at service. If you haven't, treat yourself what he's going to play. He's a beautiful, beautiful talent. Really nice. Joe? Yes? Is, is there going to be a drum circle or not? Uh, I don't know if there's going to be a drum circle. Do you, John? No, I, I don't know. I did, I did talk with Judy, but we did not talk about that. I would just say to watch the uh, announcement that comes out on, on Thursday in the eye focus. Yes. And I'll, I'll, I'll check in with folks and make sure whether it's happening or not is in there. Okay. Yeah, I know that Reverend Judy has not been feeling well. Yeah. And I think that's why she hasn't announced that yet. So she she runs that part of the service. So our prayer partner this week is Patty Hummel, right there in front of me. If you have prayers that you want to write out and have us as ministers and um, practitioners Pray on that for you. There's a frog box in the back left-hand corner, and there's paper and pen there, and you can fill out your prayer request for whoever you want that to be for, whether it be for you or someone else. And we'll pray on that all week long for you. Prayers are so powerful. And we love praying with you and for you. So please fill those out if you want to. Thank you. Next week's speaker, Reverend Bob Hand. Look forward to that, Bob. Thank you. <sighs> and it's time for our prayer protection. Will you repeat this or say this with me, please? The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. The energy of God is me. Wherever I am, God is. And all oh, is well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cheyenne, do you have another song for us? Have a it's good to see everybody today. Good to see thank you. Thank you too. all for coming. I appreciate you guys making that trip. I'm going to sing a song that I wrote. This is a song that I wrote about a week ago. It's called Wake Your Sleeping Heart. <coughs>
service today for your time and your efforts. Uh, I just want to make one other quick announcement. Luana, if you raise your hand, please, for me. Just go like this. Oh, you're going to be like that? Okay. <laughs> she uh, sends out an email every week. It's called, and we call it the iFocus, and it tells you all about the haps of what's going on with PLC. So if you'd like to receive that via email every week, See Luana after service, and she'll get your email from you, and she'll send you copies of that every week. Okay, so that's available too. Reverend Sandy, you come up and pray us out, please. Just know there is only God, and in this knowing, in this moment, 
all is good, all is love, all is family. Keep this in your heart as you go forth and look people in the eye and spread it. For life is good and we are so very, very blessed. And I give thanks for that which is ours and so it is. Thank you. Enjoy this week. Thank you. So much. Have a great week, folks. Take care.